What's up, divas and divos? You guys already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday, and your girl April is back. So, you guys, before you ask me about the hair that I'm wearing, I actually went ahead and made another wig. This one was from the company that I worked with prior. This is the second time for me working with them, and um, it's called Chalk C H O C Hair. So I'm not really sure if it's short for chocolate or whatever, but the hair is nice. They have it listed as yakky texture, but this is really actually kinky texture. So I have three bundles, two 22s, a 20, and an 18 inch frontal, but I used two and a half of the bundles. I really didn't even want to use that much because kinky stray hair can get really big. And I know in my last wig that I made, which was from Amanda Hair, theirs was kinky stray, but it was more are less textured than this. This one is very textured. Um, I only used two full bundles, but it was 20 inches, so I was able to get away with that. And even though I did the same technique, like I spaced them much further apart, I still ended up having to use two and a half bundles because, you know, the hair is longer, so the weapon track is shorter. But it came out nice. I did use some dark and lovely um, box dye to dye it, and I did keep the roots dark. And I also bleached the knots and pre plucked the hairline of it but the hair is gorgeous like I've been wearing this I put this on Sunday today is Tuesday but when you see this it'll be Wednesday and I have not taken it off since it is you know just applied with the norm the huge which is my hairspray and mousse I haven't taken it off I've slept in it you know what I'm saying I just put a scarf on at night right around the front and it's good I haven't reapplied any type of hairspray or mousse except for right here on this side other than that it's good um yeah it hasn't moved at all and it's still look at that still stuck okay i just used a blow dryer to blow dry the hairline and honeys i'm good to go but it's very textured i wanted to i wanted it to come out like a little bit lighter than this so i may go ahead and get me four more boxes of that same particular dark and lovely which is the number 378 you know the one that has like the fake Beyonce looking girl on it I may go get four more boxes because I did use four and see if it comes out a little bit lighter just a little bit um but I do like it for the most part you can use bleach if you want to but bleach you know gives like that brassy look sometimes it over processes it so I just feel a lot safer with certain textures just using like box dye but other than that there's really nothing new um you know lost a couple of pounds um school's going great for the kids you know i think this is like their second week um mumsy's birthday is tomorrow thursday she'll be 11 years old time goes fast when you have kids like you can you don't realize how fast it goes by because you know it seems like just like not yesterday but maybe like you know just really close that she was a baby and now she's 11 years old she's my height you know she's got her womanly thing you know it's just like amazing how time flies. So that's why I always say live it to your best. Enjoy life. You know, some people say life is long, but it may be long, but it just goes by really short. And there's a those and there are those who are less fortunate who don't really get to live as long. So you have to enjoy it while you can. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna just jump right into this real talk. I got on my lounging romper, you know, this is my PJs, but I just I don't sleep in this because it's a one piece and I don't like to sleep in one pieces. But I did take a shower. I worked out. I took a shower. I put some eyeliner on and some pressed powder on my face and a little highlight on my nose. I didn't just like go all out. I just didn't feel like it. And I did do my eyebrows. You know what I'm saying? I did do my eyebrows. So, you guys, on that note, if you have a real talk that you guys want me to do, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put in the sub line real talk so that way i know it's a real talk and if you want to change the names of the people in your email you can go ahead and let me know that you've done so if not i may or may feel like you haven't and i may or may not change the names but more than 99.9 percent .9%, you know what i'm saying i do change the name like you know like maury would say 99.9 percent .9%. okay yes 99.9 .9%, which means like you are gonna have your name changed you are the baby daddy the baby daddy all right who got a baby daddy out there like for real why do they put a z on it is it like the cute way of saying baby daddy like baby daddy 
trying to figure this out. That must be like a new thing for like the new baby mamas, like because that that must make them feel like more like it's trending. Like you know what I'm saying? That's just my baby daddy. You know, like is he is he supposed to be sexy? Is he handsome? Like is it different from baby daddy than versus baby daddy? Like you know, so what is the baby mama? Baby mama, baby zama? Like what what the fuck is it? Like I'm trying to figure it out. Like. You know, baby mother, baby mama, baby zama. What, like, what do you call the baby mamas in this situation? Like, because it's just baby zaddy. Like, hello? So we're going to get into this real talk real quick, okay? Because I got to get mumsy at 3 o'clock. And I'm not about to let y'all bitches have my daughter standing out there waiting. Huh? 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 What? Okay, so first of all, you guys, remember last week, for those of you guys who had took the initiative to watch, I did have a young lady, and uh, for the top of my head, I'm just going to open it up because I did, um, let's see, I think I did rename her. She was dating a guy named James, named James, and basically James moved away to California. They were from New York, and she did have like her side piece hustles on her side. I call them side piece hustles because those are the niggas that's on the side, and they was doing for her, taking to her trip, taking her trips, you know, for different countries, buying her jewelry, expensive things and such, you know what I'm saying? But James, she really did have feelings for him, but she wasn't the type to show feelings, and she thought as well as he had feelings for her. He moved away to Cali, you know, and he moved away just for his career, and then he felt like he should never have moved away because he really felt he had something for her. You know, he explained this to her in he explained this to her, one of her best friends in a text message, which she provided for me. And I read it. Well, you know, she basically, you know, James moved back home to New York and I think he's staying with his mom or wherever. And, you know, he got himself into a little trouble and, you know, she just wanted to, you know, help him out, help him get back on his feet, you know, be one of his, you know, basically, um, not witnesses, but just people that would speak up for him in court. Um, because of the type of person he is, you know, she's been helping him out with money, just things like that. And, you know, he wants to be with her, you know, he has feelings for her because, you know, he explained this to text message to her friend. And, you know, he was saying that he couldn't compete with all these other dudes that were out there because, you know, they got money and shit like that. And, you know, she likes things like that. And she explain to her best friend that that's not what it is. She doesn't care if James doesn't have money. She's she's willing to help him out because she really does love him. You know what I mean? So, and also their relationship is kind of like hidden. Only certain people know that they are together or messing together or an item or whatever, but her parents don't know, his parents don't know. So everything is hidden. So, you know, the way she feels about him and the way he felt about her, I, I just basically let her know, like, listen, closed mouths don't get bad, honey. If you want to sit around and not say something to do, then you may be missing out on something really, really good. And he as well. So y'all need to sit down, have a talk with each other and let him know how you feel about him and let him know you ain't got to compete with nobody because I'm not in it for that. I really want to be with you. And she'll let all the side piece hustles go. So basically, she's in her feelings. She really was in her her feelings about him. Well, I got an email from her this morning, and I'm so glad that she sent it to me because it was a re-update on the situation. You know, she took my advice and she said, you know what, I'm going to just let him know how I truly feel because basically, you know, closed mouths don't get fed. If you really do care for somebody and they care for you, then why not just, if, you know, approach the situation and let them know, hey, listen, this is how I'm feeling. So that way y'all got y'all don't be playing these games, you know. He like you, you like him. He telling your friend he like you. You telling me and your friend that you like him. Listen, let's just get it together and stop all the secrecy and let's just be a couple. Well, let me just drink some water, not the tea, but hmm. When I read this email this morning, I was pretty damn upset. Okay. Hi April, it's me again. The girl who wrote you with Real Talk last week, titled Kiki, Does He Fucking Love Me? Guess not. I watched your video and I thought you were absolutely right. I know James isn't vocal about how he feels, and in turn, I'm not either. I guess that's nonverbal, I guess that nonverbal habit really rubbed off on me because I left some things out, and now him and I are over for real. 
Part of the reason why I didn't want to say anything to him was because he just thinks that I'm a sensitive 20 year old, literally in my feelings. After hearing what you said, I decided to text James this past Friday and ask if we can hang out that night. He agreed and we met up with some friends. Everything was cool. We all drank, shared laughs, had real conversations all night long, and he couldn't keep his hands off of me. Like I said in the last email, our relationship was private, but the people around us knew it was love. The night got super late, so I told him we needed to leave and go back to his place. James was under the impression that I just wanted sex. For some time now, that's all we do when we were around one another, but this time I wanted conversation. I wanted to ask him what he wanted from me. I wanted to ask him what he wanted for us because I'm tired of operating as Sheila and James. I want to make this real short because I want a little shit. I, I want to talk a little, I want to make this real short because I want to talk a little shit about James. We couldn't even get to the real conversation because he was too busy taking snap videos while he was talking shit to me and sending them to his boys. Why is this nigga taking Snapchat videos talking down on me when he was just all up on me? But I'm the immature one? Okay, I don't get it and I don't want it to and I don't want to anymore. I ended up leaving, woke up to a text the next morning saying, from James, I left some of my important shit in your car. Bring it to me now. I need it. April, when I showed you my picture, did I look like a goddamn dog? And no, she did. She's beautiful. When I said he'll have to wait, he started blasting me, calling me everything but a child of God. When I don't do what he wants, I'm a bitch, I'm a hoe, I'm a dub. But I'm the one who'll put money in his pocket, funds funds his music career. I put clothes on his grown-ass 24-year-old ass, college degree having ass back. I'm the only one willing to testify on his behalf. His own mother could give two fucks if he ended up under the jail. If his mama kicked him out, I let him stay in my house. All those times I've never asked for anything in return but respect. Reading back what I wrote you earlier last week, it sounded like two kids who are too scared to speak, but it really is not like that. I was dealing with a true narcissist, and I know that's a fight I'll never win. He's so nice to everyone else, but when it comes to Sheila, James literally has treated me like the dirt beneath his shoes that I bought. Two years I put into this fool, and I heard someone once say, not everything you put love into will love you back. This is one of those scenarios. He loves me one day, doesn't want to be bothered with me the next. And when I think about it, I'm honest, I was dumb, and I'll charge it to the game. I chose James over everyone, but I've never chosen myself over anyone. I feel like the constant need for a man in my life is because my father was in and out. Sometimes I was his kid, sometimes I wasn't. I think girls typically want a man who's like their father. So naturally, I feel like my love for selective ass niggas comes from me having a selective ass father. I just wanted to update you on this. I don't think I'll be trying anything serious for a very long time. I need to learn to love myself first, but I always keep that communication tip in my back pocket. Can you give any advice on letting people go? I know you're happily taken, but in the past, how did you get over the breakups? What advice can you give to young women or guys who seek validation through men or women? How do you stop that? So basically, we're going to get to that portion at the end. So basically, as you guys heard, Sheila wanted to go back to James' place so she could have a conversation with him so she could speak on her true feelings. You know, they was all out chilling. They was with friends. They was out drinking. They was having a good time, eating, conversating for the whole entire night. James was all over her. her hands couldn't, his hands couldn't stop touching on her. You know what I'm saying? But this was once again in front of people that they knew who already knew about their relationship. They've been doing this for two years. Now, when they went back to the place, James automatically assumed that Sheila wanted some dick. Okay, cool. But she didn't want that. She wanted the conversation. So I guess he felt some type of way and started Snapchatting the motherfucking video, okay, of him and her conversating, basically of him go um putting her down, talking shit to her calling her all kinds of names, and then sending it to his boys. Like, first of all, who the fuck does some shit like that? So she did leave. But you know something? The first minute he started Snapchatting that shit, I would have been left, and I would have let him have it. You know what I'm saying? First of all, nigga, you broke. 
you ain't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. You got this young girl who is four, five years younger than you helping you out on your feet because you couldn't get it together all the way on the East Coast. And then your mother could care less if you were underneath the jail, but then you got somebody that helps you out and you're going to call her a bitch, a hoe, a dub because she not going to jump up out of her motherfucking bed, hop in her ride and bring you your shit that you left in her car. Seems like James don't even got a motherfucking car because had he had a car, then he would have had his own shit in his own car and he could have drove over there or he could have drove over to Sheila's place and got his shit. But unfortunately, the nigga probably don't. And I'm probably sure that Uber or Lyft was probably too expensive for his pockets. Now you got this dude who want to be a narcissist. Narcissists are the worst type of people there are because it seems like, you know, they are the ones that are constantly always talking down on people when it's them who ain't got their shit together, when it's them who ain't about shit. You know what I'm saying? When it's them who always pointing the blame on somebody. But you're the asshole. You're the fuck up. You're the scrub. Like, come on, man. Let's get it together. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad that... You know, in a way, I'm glad that she did have this conversation with him because had she not, this would have continued on. You know what I mean? And it's unfortunate that she left out the part where if he doesn't get his way with her, that he's going to call her or he's just going to basically talk down on her. I wish she would have initially told me that in the email because had she had told me that shit, girl, James ass would have been a dub on the side of the curb and somebody would have been wiping off the bottom of their shoes that the shit that they walked in on his ass. Like, let's be for real. What type of man are you where you can be on Snapchat and you talking about, oh, you a bitch, you a hoe, and you recording it, and then you sending it to your friends? Okay, so for one, that don't really speak well of you, James, as a man. You call her immature and insensitive when you the fucking child who's doing Snapchat videos and you sending them to your friends while you talking down on a woman. You're not going down on her. You talking down on her. And then you're going to call her insensitive, immature. Like, who does that? When you're having a conversation with somebody, it's between y'all two. But first of all, you don't stand there and talk down on somebody because they don't want to fuck. They want to have a conversation and they want to let you know the feelings that they have for you. Let me tell you something, Sheila. It's a good thing that you did have this conversation with him because you know what? It allowed you to open up your eyes and realize that you don't have to validate yourself by being with no motherfucking dude, man, nigga, or sorry ass kid, okay? Because that's what James is. He is a sorry ass child, okay? Straight point blank, period, all right? And, you know, it, when I say it was a good thing and it was a bad thing, I say it was a good thing because it allowed her to see what type of person he really is, but... I feel bad because, you know, I told her to have this conversation with him. And had she not had this conversation with him, he wouldn't have been able to disrespect her like that. And then on top of that, you disrespected her and you ridiculed and you humiliated her to your friends. Okay? I wish to God I was one of those motherfucking people that lived in her town because a bitch would have been knocking on the motherfucking door of James and asked him, is there a motherfucking problem today? Because, um, seems like I got a text from Sheila and you got, you seem like you got some issues, bro. I, I just wish I would have been living in her town. I swear to God I do because I would have been, yeah, I'm here to see you, James. What, what's the, what's the problem? What's the problem? Okay, so now we have a problem. This is the type of shit that pisses me off with men, okay? Or not even with men, with boys. Because it's sad when you give them your heart, you give them respect, you help them out, you know what I'm saying? You introduce them to your world. You're just respectful, faithful, loyal, whatever it is, you are a woman to them. And then for them to treat you like the dirt beneath the shoes that you bought, is like ridiculous. Like it's totally ridiculous. And that's why I feel like a lot of times we as women, we need to just validate ourselves and love ourselves and leave these sorry ass men alone and have time for ourselves. It's nothing wrong with being single. Like on some real shit, there's really nothing wrong with being single. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that I miss being single because I don't. But when I was single for quite some time, for a long time, it allowed me to be able to regain my thoughts regain my strength and realize who the fuck I am and also to realize like dude you are not on my caliber and also it allows you to see that some of these men out here they talk a real good game and then you realize that they ain't worth shit 
okay? They not even worth the fucking game piece that come along with the box, all right? How do you get over a breakup? You know what I'm saying? Even after so many years, okay, like, so I can't say it was a breakup. It was a divorce, but I guess that's the same thing as a breakup. It bothered me after a while, but you know, it, it bothered me, but you know, I was ready because I had already left. I had moved here. I had been through enough shit. And then after a while, when you be through so much shit with a person, you just become so numb to that shit. And it's like, you know what? You don't even feel afraid of losing that baggage. You don't even feel hurt from losing that baggage. You are so happy. And like, I'm not even going to sit here and lie. Like, you know what I'm saying? I always love my husband, but you know, I did come here to Arizona to get away from him because he was going through his own shit and I just couldn't put up with it no more. But, you know, I felt free as a person when I did get away and I moved here. I felt so good about myself. I I just was able to breathe. You know what I'm saying? I was able to breathe. And though I thought that I, I seen through a lot of the bullshit that they put out there, these men, these so-called men, I got side swiped and side blinded. You know how the horse be having those blinders on? You put a horse and they got those blinders on so they could just see straight ahead. A bitch has some blinders on because I needed to see on my peripherals, okay? I guess I was just too into doing what I needed to do for myself, you know. But not only that, I was bored, okay? I was bored, so, you know, I did seek out attention elsewhere. Um, I didn't even seek the shit out. He just seeked me out or whatever, but you know, I was just bored. And when you get bored, you sometimes get vulnerable. But my true intentions of being with that person was not what I wanted. I wanted you to get your own place and we was to remain friends. That's how I wanted it to be. But then you kept pushing yourself on me. After like two weeks of being here in my house, <clears throat> dude, you got to go. Like, seriously, it's time for your black ass, non-working dub ass to go, okay? Like, I just got so irritated, like, so irritated. But, you know, once that was over, girls, I was so happy and so free and so calm and just, like, back to my serenity. And then I realized, you know, that time had went on, my husband or my ex-husband, he was able to regain his thoughts and become the person that he needed to become. And that's good because sometimes when you leave shit alone, it just blossoms. But if you constantly on it and on it and on it, it ain't going to really get nowhere. And, you know, for me to have gotten over it, it just took some work. Like I moved here and, you know, I wasn't hurt behind it all. And true indeed, I did think of my ex-husband all the time. Well, he was still my husband at the time. I, I thought about him on a daily basis, but I didn't think of him as missing him. I just thought of him as, well, I'm glad I'm out of this situation. I'm happy now. This is going to be my life, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, it just takes time. You know, of course, when you first break up with somebody that you have been with for a long time, you do be in a slump. Of course, you be in a slump. And then you think about it all the time, all day long, all day long. And you sing songs, you play music, you sit there and cry, you may eat ice cream, you may do a whole lot of things. Everybody is different. But there is no way to totally get over somebody just like that. You know what I'm saying? You do eventually get over them because as time progresses, you stop thinking about the motherfucker. You become engaged with other things like life issues, what you want to do for yourself, friends, you know, events, family things, functions, you become engaged with things yourself, working out, trying to better you. So you start, stop thinking about them. You know what I'm saying? You start not thinking about them so often and it just gradually happens and gradually happens and gradually happens to where you are to the point to it's like, who? James who? You, James Brown? Who who you talk about? James, James what? Like, I'm trying to figure out what James is you talking about, bitch. Oh, that nigga? Oh, I forgot all about him, girl. I forgot all about him. And that's how it is. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you got to keep yourself busy, but the number one thing to do is don't go back, okay? Do not go back. Now, I know y'all probably like, girl, you done went back. It's a total difference. We've been together for 20, 20 years. And my reasons for leaving was because my husband just drank too much. And a bitch can't take that. Like, I don't like to go to jail. I have been there already for his drinking because I have a problem with my hands. I can't keep them to myself sometimes, okay? So 
you know, that was my issue, but he was never abusive and he was never disrespectful to me ever. He just was disrespectful to himself when it came to drinking. And then when he did drink, he did run off at the mouth. And like I said, I can't help if I have a reaction to your mouth with my hand. I just can't help that. You know what I'm saying? So it was best for me to just, you know, go. At least I know that he is not that person anymore because had he been the same person that was drinking and shit all the time, a bitch would be dead wrong to be fucking with him again. And you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't even gave him that time of day. Not at all. Like, I'm not about to deal with that shit. Like, being around somebody that's an alcoholic is the worst thing. Like, drinking breaks up families. And if you guys could only hear the way he talks to me about certain issues and how he, you know, his life and how he felt about himself and... I just be amazed and I just sit there and I listen because it's like, damn, nigga, you like really mature to like the 10th power. It's amazing like to be able to have a conversation with him and just to know that this is over and done with and that you can really totally admit that you have a pro you've had a problem and like the things that it has done to you and your family and your relationship and you know what I'm saying? Like it takes a real man to be able to admit to certain things and I commend him on that. So that is the reason for our togetherness. But with James, he's a narcissist and he's a child. You can't have things your way so you act like that. You call her a bitch and a hoe and a thought and whatever else is underneath the sun but a god a child of God. Like you know something, honey? He is not worth your time. And that's the first thing that you need to realize. This nigga is not worth none of your motherfucking time. Like on some real shit. If you can have a man call you a hoe and everything short of, he's not worth shit. First of all, he's got a mother, okay? And I'm not sure if he got a sister or aunt, but either way, he's definitely got a mother. And if you can talk to another female like that, then nigga, you ain't worth shit. And we don't want to be with niggas that ain't worth shit. And sometimes we have to convince ourselves that just to be able to get over that hurdle of the first week or so of breakup. And if that's what we got to do, that's what we got to do. But you have to realize we're not really trying to convince ourselves. This is motherfucking facts. Okay, bitch. This is motherfucking facts. The nigga ain't worth shit. So, of course, a breakup, it takes some time, and it just takes getting over, and it just takes mind control. It's like smoking cigarettes. You want to stop smoking. You know that shit is bad for you. You know the shit is not going to do anything for you. You know you wasting your money on it. Same shit. James ain't good for you. You wasting your time and your money on this motherfucker. Let me tell you something. He got a case and he's going through his case. Let his ass go through his case. If you want to still speak upon him in the court, then that's on you. You know what I'm saying? Me personally, if it were I, I would just leave all ties alone with the nigga because he's not worthy of it. He don't deserve you putting yourself on the line for him. He's not trying to put you on the line, put himself on the line for you. He putting you on the line. He's, he's, he's humiliating and ridiculing you on Snapchat. If that were me, that would be the deal breaker. That wouldn't even be the deal breaker, but that right there, the whole Snapchat shit of him Snapchatting his voice while he's talking down on you, that would right there have me so fucking livid and heated, okay? You would see smoke coming out of my ears that I would never give you the time of day again. The first thing, block that nigga from all social media contact and all phone and text message contacts on some straight up. And if he still do end up getting through to you, you know what? This is what I say. When a nigga piss you off and they feel like, you know, they got the upper hand is because we go off on them and we verbally cuss them out and we just talk to them like they ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? But this is the one thing you don't do. As a woman, when you break up with a man or he break up with you and then he call you up, ignore his phone calls if he texts you you can ignore those too and if he constantly oh i'm good great thanks for asking I hope you're doing well and just end it like that people do not like to get a fucking basic answer back especially one like james if you give me a basic answer back to some shit i'm gonna feel like oh this bitch is really not feeling me that has him and his feelings but if he want to cuss you out and talk shit about you sweetheart do not waste your time on his sorry ass because for one 
you are way above that. Too far above that. You 20 years old, this nigga 25, and he ain't got shit to pop a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. Girl, please. This nigga need to get his shit together before you do. Okay. The only thing you got to get together, honey, is your mind right. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Fuck these fucking petty ass niggas. Like Nicki Minaj say. Mm -hmm. That right there, the Snapchat whole shit. That would have me way over this nigga, way over him. Bitch, I'll be so far over him, I'll be on the other side of town, okay? Way over him, all right? It just takes time. Don't allow it to get to you. Don't allow it to bring you down. And also remember this, you're better than that, sweetheart. You way better than that. No, ever, don't ever stoop so low to somebody else's character. Don't stoop so low to somebody else's level. You know what I'm saying? I understand that some people don't want to be single. I understand that some people don't want to be alone. But you know what? Being alone is a good thing. I like to be alone. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I do. I like to be alone. When I say I like to be alone, meaning I don't mind not hanging out with people and having like a whole bunch of friends. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind that. I keep to myself, you know. I'm not one of those type of people who like to go out partying. I don't really like to socialize too much. And it's not because I feel like, oh, I'm better than anyone else. It's just the type of person that I am. And I've always been like this. And maybe not always, but as I've gotten older, you know, I'm just really like very like secluded to myself and to my family. So I don't mind just being April and sitting in the house and doing nothing but making wigs and videos and editing videos. This is my outlet and this is my way of being able to communicate with each and every one of you guys. Um, but being alone is not so bad because for one, you ain't got nobody asking you no dumbass fucking questions. For two, you ain't got to give back no dumbass motherfucking answers. For three, you ain't got to cook, clean, and feel like you have to fucking entertain the asses. But most importantly, it gives you time to know who the fuck you are and be able to love yourself. Sweetheart, you got your own business. You beautiful as hell. You got men who will shower you with gifts, but fuck them as well. Shower your own self with gifts like knowledge, okay? Give yourself that knowledge and that love that you deserve. Every woman deserves it. I don't care. I don't give a fuck what color you are, race, whatever, sex, meaning Man, woman, transgender, everybody deserves respect. Everybody deserves to have love within themselves. Love yourself because if you don't love yourself first, you are going to end up doing so many things and fucking up so much that you are going to realize it in the end. That's why I say don't don't drink, don't drive, don't do drugs because that's not loving yourself. You are harming yourself more than anything. And by being with somebody that's toxic, it's harming yourself. That shit will fuck you up mentally, okay? You don't never want to be one of those women on those talk shows or those shows where, you know, it's like you, you feel like it's it's called snap. And they just get tired of the shit after a while. And they just snap on a dude. Like, seriously, you don't want to be one of those women. Because for real, it's not worth it. Anybody that could exploit you mentally, verbally, physically, ridicule you and humiliate you for everyone on social media to see is not worth your time. And that lets you know that this person ain't nothing but a motherfucking snake. And if you can't get no pussy... And you're acting like that, I can only imagine how he acts when he don't get what he wants, like on some real shit. He gonna meet the one though, Sheila. He gonna meet the right one, or the right bitch one day, what's gonna give him a run for his money. And I guarantee you, he is going to deserve everything he motherfucking gets. It's called karma, bitch. It's called karma. Don't ever let no one, man or female, get you out of character and make you feel like you are less than to where you have to stoop to their level just to be able to be with them. It's a blessing that she did go and speak to him. And I'm glad that she did. And I'm glad that she took my advice because you know why? It opened up her eyes and it opened up the, the, for her to be able to see like, this is what he really is like. And he's never going to change. So, you know, let Sheila know how you guys feel about the whole situation and what would you do in her situation. And now we're going to go to the next uh, Real Talk because I'm going to do two today because one is, um, oh, she responded to me. Hold on, hold up, hold up. She did respond because I emailed her back this morning and let her know that, um, you know, I was going to do real tough. She says, I really wanted to knock his head off his shoulders, but 
He doesn't even deserve that. LOL. Thank you for replying. Can't wait to hear the wise words. See, when she says he doesn't even deserve that, meaning he ain't even worth her time. Like, fuck it, man. You know what? Sometimes you gotta you gotta feed people like you got like a grain of salt. Like, all right, dust, wipe that dirt off your shoulder, boo. I'm not about to give you that reaction that you probably want. Like, okay, I'm good. Goodbye. That's how you got to do them. I know like that's, that's like with me with certain things. When I see people in public, okay, it takes a lot out of me sometimes to not get smart back. You know what I'm saying? Because I might have seen somebody that's real mouthy or try to get rude with me, like, like a, not even a customer, but like a, a worker, an employee of whatever Walmart, Target, let's just use those as an example, you know, sometimes, or just people in the store in general, you know what I mean? I have to like, you know, you don't say excuse me, but you just like trying to just push me out the way. Well, well okay. All right. I ain't, I have let it slide a couple of times, but then there are times when I had to give a lady in Hobby Lobby a motherfucking lesson in the word excuse me and let her know. Bitch, that shit is not fucking rare. It's not extinct. Okay. The word excuse me is not extinct. We use that shit here. So what you're not going to do is try to push my kids out your way. All right. So that's a little bit different situation, but I have had many situations where I had to like, be like, you are not even worth my time. Like with the one that I, that asshole that I was dating, you know, he went and tried to do all type of dumb shit to me, but you know something, nigga, you ain't even worth my time. Please boy, bye. Get the fuck up out of here. You fucking sorry ass loser. And she read it right. He don't even deserve that because he don't even deserve to get his head knocked off by her because he's not even worth it. So we're going to move on to the next email for real, for real now. But also, Sheila, I'm glad you found out and I'm glad that, you know what I'm saying, you are wise. She's wise. And I feel like she's very wise because like she said, you don't need a man to validate you. And she's right. You don't need a woman to validate you. Shit, you don't even need a motherfucking dog or cat to validate your ass. Okay, hey, let's go on to this one real quick. I'm so hungry. Hi, April. This is a long one. Hmm. Sorry about the length. I need guidance on a real tough situation. You can call me Lee. I met my friend Patrice in freshman year of high school 14 years ago. We were so close that we saw each other as sisters. Patrice was sometimes asked to borrow money from me, nothing major, just $20 here or there to help her with gas to and from work or towards her phone bill. She always paid me back, so I never had a problem with it. Well, not long after Patrice got her first car, it broke down on her. She needed $300 to get it out of the shop and already had two, so she only needed $100 from me. As always, I didn't have a problem with it, so I gladly gave it to her. She promised she would give it back, and I believed her. We were family, and that's what family does, or so at least I thought. Not only did Patrice never pay the $100 back, but she started doing shady shit like not paying her half of the phone bill when we, um, excuse me, not paying her half of the bill when we would go out to eat. When we would go to the movies and get our tickets, the cashier would tell us our total, and Patrice would just stare at me, expecting me to pay for her ticket when she always paid for herself. Mind you, she worked two jobs, two jobs, man, at this point. So she had the money to pay for herself 90% of the time. She just didn't want to. It was like she started seeing me as an ATM instead of her friend. I distanced myself from her for a while, but things were never the same. We had an altercation via Facebook Messenger when she asked to borrow money from me to fix her brakes on her car. April. My brother had passed away just two months ago, and she knew that. I didn't cuss her out, but I did call her selfish and insensitive. We made up later on, but I knew we would never be close like we used to be. I got engaged not long after this. It was a bittersweet time because I was happy to be getting married, but also sad my brother would not be able to be there to see it. Patrice would talk to me off and on about her life, the people she was dating, and so on, but she couldn't have cared less about my fiancé. Anytime I brought him up, she would just respond with, hmm, as in, girl, I don't care about your man. We got married in a small ceremony, and most of my family and my husband's family were not in attendance, so Patrice wasn't there, of course, either. Here's the real problem. 
I have rarely heard from Patrice since I have moved across the country a few years ago. She had the nerve to contact me to borrow money. Really, girl? Who does that? About two years ago, she called me up, but we barely spoke. Okay, since then. Well, she got engaged recently and reached out to me again. I said I was happy for her, complimented her and her fiance, but remembered in the back of my head how she treated me. Even so, I tried to be a good person and take the high road, so I congratulated her. She even said she wanted me to be in her wedding as a bridesmaid. Well, old habits die hard and some things never change. April. I got a phone call and see that. I get a phone call and see that it's Patrice calling me. I pick up. We start chatting. She starts telling me about how the alternator in her car broke and she's short on cash. Did this girl really call me to borrow money? I was heated. I wasn't nasty, but I told her, I'm sorry that happened to you. Do you think you can call someone else to help you? When she figured out that I wasn't going to help her, her tone got so dry and she didn't really have much to say. So I told her it was nice speaking to her, but I had to go. To make things worse, she puts a passive aggressive post on Facebook about people coming through for her and that's why they're her, her maids of honors. Okay, whatever. I knew she was talking about me because she had just gotten off the phone with me after asking to borrow money. April, I'm about, to re I'm about ready to throw in the towel. I'm asking you for advice because the topic of making up with friends has been relevant to you since you've discussed your friendship with love kisses. I really don't know what to. I don't I don't I really don't want to go to her wedding now and I just don't want to be friends. What do you think? Thanks in advance, Diva Lee. So basically Lee and Patrice were friends since freshman year in high school. They've been friends for you know, they met each other 14 years ago. They were the best of friends. Patrice would borrow $20 here and there for gas for her car to get to and from work. And she would always give it back. Or, you know, half of the bill, you know, she might need phone bill money or, you know, whatever. They would always make sure, Patrice would always make sure to pay back Lee her money. And then, you know, Patrice had another issue with her car. Her alternator, I think her alternator went, or something happened with her car, and she needed three. She needed three hundred dollars. She needed three hundred dollars to get it fixed, and she only had two. So of course, what did she do? She borrowed a hundred dollars from Lee. Leah never got her money back. Okay, whatever. They stopped engaging in conversation just as much. And first of all, let me tell y'all this much. Now, when you got a friend who loans you money and, and you pay it back, that's that's what's up. That's what you're supposed to do. Don't say you're going to borrow something and then you don't get the shit back. Bitch, it's can I have. Because if you borrow something, that means give it the fuck back. The word borrow just sounds like something that you would want to give back. But when you have no intentions on paying that person the fuck back or giving them their shit back, bitch, you just might as well say, can I have, okay? Can I motherfucking have? But did Patrice start seeing um, Leah as a motherfucking ATM machine? Like... You can swipe a car between her booty cheeks and cash will fall the fuck out. Like, okay, bitch. So y'all hanging out, y'all going out to eat, y'all going out to the club, y'all going out to the movies, and y'all pay half and half. This bitch is just looking at Leah like, what's up? I'd have been like, um, this separate. That that's me. If I start seeing my friend as thinking that I'm money, I'm money banks, no, I'm gonna let you know ahead of time, waiter, waitress, movie man, wherever the fuck we at. Oh, it's separate bills. Because that's what I fucking do. That's what the fuck I do. I'm not about to sit here and continuously pay for somebody else's shit. Like, fuck out of here. Like, if I invite you out to dinner, then that means that I'm going to pay. But if we, we agree on something together, bitch, you better pay your motherfucking half. Like, on some real shit. You, and even if I invite you out to dinner, like, hey, girl, you want to go out to eat? That don't mean I'm going to pay for you necessarily. That, that don't mean... I didn't say, bitch, I'd like to take you out to dinner. I just say, yo, you want to go out to eat? Or you want to go to a movie? That don't mean, bitch, I'm paying for you. Especially if you ain't my motherfucking man. Bitch, I ain't fucking you. But, okay, so Leah was started going through some shit where, you know, her brother passed away. And then she was also engaged. Patrice ain't really want to hear about, you know, Leah's misfortune or good fortune. She wanted it to be all about her motherfucking self. Okay, I get that. Some people are like that. They really don't want to talk about nothing but themselves. Those are the motherfucking people that you have to stay clear of because they they fucking bougie as fuck. 
They are not the type of friends that you want to fuck with. If you got a friend who just wants to talk about themselves all the time, bitch, please don't be their friends. Okay? Because when it comes to you and your needs, I guarantee you, that bitch is not even going to be able to give you no words of wisdom, advice, and don't even care to hear one motherfucking thing you got to say. Now, Leah done moved all the way across country, all across the country, and she ain't heard from Patrice in all these years. So, first of all, if you ain't hear from somebody in so many years, bitch, please don't call me the fuck up to ask to borrow some motherfucking cash. Like, where are we doing this at? If I ain't spoke to you in a few years and I reach out to you, I would not have the balls to ask you if I could borrow some goddamn money. Like, I, I don't know. I have pride, okay? I don't really ask people for shit anyway. But if I have not spoken to you in some years, bitch, I'm not about to ask you if I could borrow some motherfucking, some motherfucking cheese. Like, bitch, are you crazy? I'll be like, you know, basically, how you doing? What's up? I'm not even trying to work the borrowing shit in there. Like, I'm not about to do that. But did this bitch, Patrice, hit her up, hit Leah up on Facebook? You ain't spoke to this bitch in years, and you're going to ask her to borrow some motherfucking money? But you didn't just say you getting married. Well, no, the Facebook wasn't even the the money, the, the marriage one. The Facebook was just another time. And, you know, we gave it to her, I probably expect. But did Patrice call her? Patrice called Leo on the phone and basically wanted to borrow money to get her alternator face. Bitch, you about to get married and you asking me for some motherfucking money? We don't even rock like that. But you want me to be in your wedding? I'm feeling like she only wanted you in her wedding because, you know, so she could borrow some cash when she needs the shit. Let me tell you something. First of all, if a bitch fucking contact me and we ain't been fucking with each other that long, I'm not about to be in your wedding. I'm not wanting to be one of the contestants, okay? Because that's what I'm about to call it. The contestants in your motherfucking wedding events, Okay. I'm not about to be that. Now, if you want to invite me to sit in the motherfucking pupils, aisles, chairs, picnic tables, wherever the fuck you want me to sit at, I may be willing to come and sit. But, bitch, I am not about to be one of the motherfucking contestants in your fucking wedding party event, okay? But if you're about to get married, that means and you asking me to be in your wedding, that means you got money stashed or saved or somewhere where you can afford the wedding, then bitch, please don't call me the fuck up asking me, can you borrow some money because your alternator went. Bitch, you're about to get married, which means you engaged. Where that nigga that you fucking? Okay, you need to be asking that nigga for money for your car. Not me, bitch. We not fucking go suck his dick and make a couple extra hundred dollars to get your fucking alternator fixed in your car. Bitch, don't call me up asking me, can I borrow some money? We don't even rock like that, okay? And then on top of that, Patrice, did you just turn the fuck around and go on Facebook and write like a subliminal message? This is what I would do, okay, sweetheart? If you don't want to go to her wedding, please don't force yourself to go. Never go somewhere where you don't want to motherfucking be. All right. Trust me when I tell you that because that was the issue that I had one time, which was a year ago. I went to fucking Vegas the second time, not the first time with my bestie, but the second time I went to Vegas with that lady, Marla. What was her name? You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. Marla. I don't remember. Marla, Marlene, some shit like that. I went to Vegas with her. Okay. I didn't even want to go. I told my daughters, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Oh, go. You got to get out the house. When I went, you know, we drove. She drove her car. <clears throat> and um, Mar Marlo, some shit like that's her name. Um, we went, you know, she had her mother in the back seat because she had to drop her mother off somewhere else in Arizona, which was like Kingsman. It was Kingsman, I think, which was like three hours away, three or two and a half hours away to another relative's house. So that way her mother wouldn't be left at the apartment with. Marlowe's or whatever her name is, husband or ex-husband. So we did that, but okay, the ride there, first of all, I told you guys I didn't want to go, but I worked my way up into going. The ride there, her mother is in the back praying and just 
having the Holy Ghost. And I'm not exaggerating, you guys. I'm not exaggerating. Okay. I'm not overdoing it. She was in the back seat of this Ford car. She had like a, a sedan. And she was the back there talking about Mama say Mama Sa Mama Kusa. Mama. I don't know what the fuck she was saying, but you know, I th I thought that that would just justify what the fuck I felt. Okay. But she was having a freaking holy moment. Okay, in the back seat of the car. Like, I don't even know why, because we wasn't even listening to church music. We weren't talking about anything spiritual or nothing. Okay. But so we went to Vegas. We finally got there after spending like three hours at her relative's house talking shit about her bead business. Because if you guys remember, I told you that she sells beads, like beads that you can make jewelry out of. Like, bitch, you can get those any motherfucking where. Well, anyway, we finally get to Vegas. Okay. And, um, we was at, a, a, at an Airbnb and, um, you know, the trip was like ridiculous. I, our, our personalities was totally opposite one another. She's just too jittery and just too like cheerful and just like, you know, I can't take the people that just be like, let's do it. Like, I can't like, I can't take that. Like, bitch, calm the fuck down on some real shit. Calm the fuck down. But I let that slide. And then I also let a lot of other things slide. Like I told you, I don't like to do fucking Snapchat and Facebook or YouTube or not even YouTube, excuse me. Um, what do you call that? Instagram live. I don't like to do that shit. Like if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it on my own. But you know, she had the phone up like, Oh, I'm here with muffin. It's my lovers. I'm like, girl, please don't. I had to actually walk off from her and just go venture out on my own in Vegas. Like, cause we was at this this it's not it wasn't a seminar but this thing where they had like a whole bunch of different vendors and you know it was really nice but i had to walk off onto the other side of the building where you could just buy things like individually and not by bulk and she didn't even know i was walking off because she was so busy running off at the fucking pussy meaning at the mouth to another vendor about her fucking bead business and this vendor wasn't even a bead business it was a bath bomb business and they were also located in arizona but oh my god i walked away because i already was standing there for like 15 minutes and i was trying to be really patient and when i wanted to see something it was just like oh well let's just speed by it so i left i walked off she called me i i i left her to um decline probably like six times until finally i was like because she kept texting me and i was like you know she said, why'd you leave? And I let her know. But, you know, our personalities clashed something terrible. And um, it was like one of the worst trips that I had ever had in my life. And I didn't want to go. So when you don't want to go somewhere, don't motherfucking go. Because I guarantee you, you are going to be more miserable being there than you would have been just sitting at home doing nothing. If you guys ain't friends like that, then don't fucking go. You don't have to make your appearance and feel like you owe somebody something because they sent you an invitation. Let me tell you something. I have got many invitations and not that I didn't want to go. Like my brother got married, but I had just moved here and he's in Pennsylvania. I couldn't go to that. My funds wasn't correct. And as much as I wanted to go, I just wasn't able to. I have gotten an invitation from one of my subscribers to come to one of their weddings. Um, and I just wasn't able to go because, you know, I have so many other priorities. But I feel like this. If you don't want to go somewhere, sweetheart, don't go. Don't force yourself to feel like you need to be there. That bitch was already talking about you on Facebook, like, you know what I'm saying, with some subliminal shit. Fuck that bitch. And on top of that, you only going to go because she sent you an invitation. The bitch is a user. She done got past the phase of paying you the fuck back. That bitch is on some new shit where she feel like you bank up motherfucking America and she ain't got to pay you back. Or she only calls on you when she needs something. Like, let me tell you something. I'm not about to have nobody calling on me when they fucking need me for something. Like, if you cannot call me just to say what's up and how you doing, the bitch don't call me the fuck at all. Like, on some real shit, I'm not about to waste my time going to your fucking wedding, which means you got to pay for flight tickets because you did say you moved and to get to her wedding girl bye let that bitch fucking go ahead do you really think you're gonna be missed at the wedding sweetheart she's probably not even gonna miss you and if you have showed up and if you do show up then what that bitch probably gonna run up at the mouth talking about oh mm, i don't know why she showed up or treat you some type of way let me tell you something if you don't want to be somewhere bitch don't motherfucking be there okay on some real shit don't be there there are plenty of places that i had to be and didn't want to motherfucking be
Did I go? Nope. Okay. I'll be the last one who's going to show up somewhere where I really don't want to motherfucking be. And on top of that, you got a bitch that's using you. And on top of that, okay, listen, y'all. First of all, I understand we as friends, we we help one another. You know what I'm saying? But I love the, the little bit of friends that I do have. I love the hell out of Love Kisses 99, Robin. She has been my friend for years since I started on YouTube. And I love her to pieces. It was unfortunate we stopped speaking to each other. But you know what? That's what a real friendship is If once we start speaking to each other. If we're able to rekindle the friendship. But me and her are on a totally different level. We are both grown women, and I love her to pieces. My friend Rebecca, my bestie Rebecca that moved back here to Arizona, I love her to pieces too. We are still best friends. And you know what I'm saying? For those two women, I would do anything in the world with. But they don't use me like that. You know what I'm saying? They do not use me like that. When you got a friend who is using you for your paper, Sweetheart, that's not your friend. That's really not your friend. And sometimes you got to just walk away from people and leave them the fuck alone. As bad as it may hurt, you ain't losing no motherfucking sleep over this bitch. You could care less if that bitch got married today and got divorced tomorrow, okay? You could care less if the bitch got stood up at the motherfucking altar, all right? On some real shit. And then on top of that, I do believe like when you're a bridesmaid or something, you got you to gotta buy your own dress. Like I said, bitch, I am not worried about being somebody's contestant in a motherfucking wedding bullshit. And if I'm being used and asked for money, you, first of all, if you about to get married, that means bitch, you engaged. That means you got a man. And that means you fucking. Let me tell you something. I'll be damned if I call up my mother, let's just say. Well, I haven't spoke to, I speak to my mother every day, so we can't even use her. Okay, I'm going to just say this. I'll be damned if I hit up one of my friends on Facebook, who we were friends in high school, and we still cool. We, like, shout each other out once in a blue. But I'll be damned if I'm about to, prime example. Okay, so me and this girl, we're just going to call her Linda, because I don't want to give her real name out. We were the best of friends in high school. Me, her another girl and another girl. We was in this dance group. It wasn't even a dance group. It was a talent show in our school. So we we called ourselves um, four, is, four is Enough because there was four of us. And um, in the dance group, you know, we was dancing to the song by, oh God, Color Me Bad. Ooh, I set you up, okay? And so we all had on our white jumper, right overall rompers, whatever you want to call that. And, you know, we did our performance on stage. It was pretty damn good. Like a bitch was moving. Back then I could do some moves. I wish I had that videotape. Oh, it's a VCR tape. But, you know, I will show you guys. I'm going to have to try to find that shit on the internet or something because I really want to see myself back then. Ooh, did my stomach just growl by the microphone? But anyway... So, you know, we grew out of touch because as you get older, you evolve. Your friendships, you know, they blossom. Not saying that y'all not friends no more, but we still are friends are like, you know, I don't know if you want to call it friends anymore, like associates. We will talk to each other on Facebook every now and again. Not like like that, like that. But did this bitch hit me up talking about um she needs some wigs and could I give her a discount? We First of all, bitch, we don't even rock like that. You're not about to be fucking sending me a message through Facebook talking about, can you get a discount? And can I hook her up with some wigs so that she can sell them? Bitch, kiss my motherfucking light-skinned ass, okay? This is the shit that I be talking about with people. Like, you have to know who your friends are and shit because if you don't, then you'll be lured into all types of bullshit and foolishness and drama that ain't even worth your time. Now, on another note, on another note, y'all ain't even friends like that no more. Y'all are just associates, okay? Let's just call it that. That bitch is not your friend. Y'all are associates. Don't feel the need to please, okay? Do not. Don't feel the need to spend your money on a motherfucking plane ticket to somebody else's wedding who could care less about you. All you are is a loan to her. Can I get a loan? That probably would never be paid back. Bitch, if you're about to get married, that means you fucking a nigga. You fucking the nigga. Put it down, lay it down on a nigga, and then get your motherfucking alternator fixed. 
Go give them some motherfucking brain. You know what I'm saying? Go give them some head and get that motherfucking alternator fixed, the motherfucking brakes fixed, that motherfucking inspection done. Bitch, go get you a new motherfucking ride. The bitch always got car powers. Maybe she needs to get a new car. All right? Or motherfucking fuck the dude, the dude right to where he can get you a new car. Either way, listen, Leah. Don't feel obligated because she's not obligated. And once you write some shady shit about me on social media, bitch, I'm not fucking with you. And especially if I feel used. And I'm just not about to force myself to be somewhere where I really don't want to be and I really don't want to be friends with her. This is what you do. Stop communicating back with her, back and forth, back and forth in any type of social media network. If she calls, swipe that bitch to decline it. Swipe her to the left and let her go to voicemail. If she text messages you, ignore the shit. I have ignored enough text messages in my life to where it's like, you know what, bitch, I don't have time for you. After a while, you'll get it that I'm not really interested in fucking with you. Point blank, period. Friends come a dime a dozen. And you know what? As we get older, we realize that those friends are just friends or associates they're really not worth going to bat for especially when they can use you so you guys it's 2 57 i'm about to go gotta go get mumsy she gets out in 10 minutes so you know what i'm saying gonna go get her i hope you guys had a great real talk i hope you enjoyed it make sure you watch um um my beauty video it's an update and you know shit like that i'm so hungry right now i'm going to upload this video um probably this weekend you know what i'm saying and yeah i love you guys and also for those who've been emailing me and asking me when am i going to have some more wigs on my website it'll be this weekend more than likely saturday it will not be the synthetic wigs it'll just be like lace front front tools but you know i sell them for really inexpensive so it will be this coming weekend so I love you guys. Stay deep and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, share this video with everybody else. Or so you know I'm starving. I will see you guys in the soon to come. Uh, uh, never leave my body.